Welcome to the Marriage Steps Podcast. We're developing a long-lasting, happy relationship is the status symbol to achieve. And following my six marriage steps is a path to help get you there. I'm your host, Dr. Wyatt Fisher, a licensed psychologist specializing in marriage counseling. The Marriage Steps Podcast is listener-supported, so to help keep it on the air so couples worldwide can receive hope for their marriage, please consider becoming a monthly supporter by going to patreon.com forward slash marriage steps. As a reminder, I'm doing my Total Marriage Refresh, a digital date night coming up May 23rd and 24th. It's $59 per couple, and it's both nights for around three hours. And I'm going to go through my top six marriage steps. It's very interactive, lots of exercises, a live Q&A. Sign up if you haven't already. You want to make sure you go through this course if you haven't been to one of my conferences. It's essential training on how to have a good marriage. So you go to my website to check it out more if you're interested at drwyattfisher.com. The marriage tip of the night is avoid boredom in your marriage. Have you ever noticed that? It's so easy to get bored. We fall into these ruts. We fall into these routines. We do the same thing day in and day out. And before long, you're bored. Marriage can be boring. And when you were dating, your relationship was exciting. You went to new places. You talked about new things. You tried out new new adventures together. And when you get married after a while, you stop doing that. And you just get into an old rut and you start to rot. And so the tip to consider is how could you spice things up in your marriage, especially now under lockdown? Where could you go different? Somewhere outdoors in nature, perhaps. What could you do different in in the bedroom sexually? How could you spice things up there? How could you enjoy one another more? How could you get to know each other deeper? How could you change up some of the activities you do? Intentionally be thinking about how to add variety to your marriage because boredom makes us feel less in love with our partner and vice versa. When we're doing exciting things together, our feelings follow and we feel more in love. The marriage joke of the night is they say that men who have a pierced ear are better prepared for marriage because they've experienced pain and bought jewelry. (laughs) Okay. The marriage message of the night is the top five pitfalls to avoid with bouncing the ball. So bounce the ball is one of these tools I teach on, on sharing power. I'm really big into tools for marriage because I believe we need tools. Just like you need tools to fix your car, the dentist needs tool to fix, tools to fix your teeth. We need tools to improve our marriage. But a lot of couples have never been trained on tools. And so I really love developing tools to help couples. And one of the tools I've developed is called Bounce the Ball. And what that does when couples follow it is it ensures that both spouses have an equal voice and they both feel like equal partners in the relationship. So to review Bounce the Ball, if you're facing a decision that's going to impact your marriage, this is when you use Bounce the Ball. And how you do it is partner A says their position, they share their values underneath that position, and then they bounce the ball by saying, what do you think? And then partner B does the same. Partner B shares their position on the topic, the values that are driving their position, and then they bounce the ball by saying, what do you think? Once both partners have done that, things change because now partner A has to adjust their position by a few degrees to come closer to partner B, and then they throw out their new idea, and they say, what do you think? And then partner B does the same thing. They adjust their position by a few degrees to move closer to partner A's position. They say the new idea and they say, what do you think? They bounce the ball. So if a couple keeps doing that back and forth, they'll reach a win-win as long as they both believe in the value of having a unified front and sharing power and having an equal voice. So that's bounce the ball. And right now with COVID, bouncing the ball is more important than ever. There's a lot of decisions you have to make as a couple that's going to impact your marriage on some level. So you need to learn to bounce the ball to share power. However, working with couples to bounce the ball, I've noticed there's multiple pitfalls that can happen when couples use bounce the ball. So that's what I'm going to go over tonight. The first one is judging your partner's position. How much do you do that? Probably a lot, because it's so easy to do. So let's imagine your partner is sharing what they think on something, and you think in your mind, that is so stupid. 
that is so ridiculous. They're being so irrational. That's so extreme, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever it is, you're judging their position. And most likely that comes out with what you say, that comes out with your nonverbals, and you start looking down on them and becoming contemptuous. Maybe you roll your eyes or you take a big sigh. You do something that's not respectful. Don't do that. Eh, that's a pitfall. When your partner is describing their position, you have to remove yourself from what you personally think about their position and learn to respect it because it's gonna be different than yours. You're different people. So that's the one pitfall. The second pitfall is interrupting your partner. When you're listening to their position, it's so easy to interrupt and interject and counter and try to rebuttal because you're disagreeing with what they're saying. Eh, don't do that. Don't interrupt your partner when they're sharing their position. Be patient, try to respect their side, and you'll have a chance to share your side when they bounce the ball back to you. The third pitfall to watch out for is getting off track. So it's very easy when you're doing bounce the ball where you start off with one topic and before you know it, you're talking about a different topic. You have to stay focused on the goal. The goal is a decision you have to make that's gonna impact your marriage. So for example, let's imagine you're trying to decide if you should allow your kids to have sleepovers during COVID. That's a decision parents are making right now. And partner A may be really lenient and think that's fine, no problem, they can have sleepovers. Partner B may be thinking, no way, we're under a pandemic. Why would I want my kid exposed to more virus possibilities at someone else's house? So there's a standoff right there. So that couple is gonna have to bounce the ball back and forth respectfully without interrupting to find a win-win. The fourth thing, the fourth pitfall to watch out for is forgetting to bounce the ball. Bouncing the ball is when you say, what do you think? So when you're playing team sports like basketball or soccer, everyone hates a ball hog. And that's the person that holds the ball and they won't pass and they're looking around and they just, they hold it, they won't pass it. In marriage, that's the person who just says what they think and that's all they say. They say what they think and they stop. That's not turning that conversation into a collaborative dialogue, that's a monologue. And there may be various reasons why they're doing that, but that's them being a ball hog. So. The pitfall is don't do that. Eh. Remember to bounce the ball. And when you bounce the ball, the phrase is, what do you think? So every time you say your position, end it with saying, what do you think? That turns it into a collaboration and into a dialogue. The fifth pitfall to watch out for is forgetting to move towards win wins. When couples do this bounce the ball, they can get frustrated at their partner's perspective they can go off track, they can interrupt, they can lose focus on what they're trying to accomplish, and they stop suggesting win-wins. The ultimate goal of bouncing the ball is developing win-wins. And a win-win is something that is gonna meet you in the middle. I'm not gonna get everything I want, you're not gonna get everything you want. We have to meet in the middle, a compromise. A lot of us are not good at compromising because we get so rigid and so strong with our position we forget to loosen to compromise. So eh, don't do that. Make sure when you're doing bounce the ball that you keep in mind the goal is to find a win-win. So this couple that was debating, should our kids have sleepovers? Should they not? One of the things they're gonna have to decide is frequency. Should they have a sleepover once a month? Once every two months? The one partner wanted their kids to have the sleepover. This was a couple I actually worked with. The one couple wanted to have, they're okay with their kids having a sleepover once a month. The other partner wanted no sleepovers at all. So the win-win they finally came to was, we'll let our kids have a sleepover every two months during COVID. So that's an example of win-win because the one partner wanted a sleepover, the other partner wanted none. So their win-win was every other month, the kids can have one sleepover. So that's an example. You wanna continually move towards win-win solutions. When your partner has a different position than you, try to remain calm, try to remain respectful, and continually be thinking, how can I meet them in the middle? How could I compromise on this? What's a solution that's gonna honor my values underneath this, this issue and their values? How can, we, how can we honor both of these perspectives? There's always an answer.
Sometimes it's not obvious. Sometimes one of you are being too rigid. Sometimes you may need to ask other people for ideas or see a marriage counselor for ideas, but there's always a solution and you have to just brainstorm and not move forward with that decision until you have found a win-win. If you move forward before you have found a win-win and just one of you decides or one of you gives in, that's gonna create problems in your marriage because the person who just gave in is gonna feel resentful and voiceless. So every decision in your marriage that impacts your relationship, practice bouncing the ball back and forth by saying, what do you think? And keep adjusting your position until you reach a win-win. So those are the five pitfalls to watch out for when you're using bounce the ball. The first is judging your partner's position. The second is interrupting your partner. The third is getting off track. The fourth is forgetting to bounce the ball by saying, what do you think? And the fifth is forgetting to suggest win wins. If you wanna learn more about bounce the ball, I have a training module all about it. It's a PowerPoint presentation with me giving examples. And I go, I discuss it at length and it's on my website, drwhitefisher.com and click on training modules. Thank you for listening to the Mayor Seth podcast. If you enjoyed the episode today, be sure to leave a review and click the five stars. For more marriage resources and to find out more about my marriage seminar coming up, the digital date nights, be sure to go to my website, drwyattfisher.com and click on marriage retreats. Also, be sure to send me your marriage questions. You can send me them through Instagram, Facebook, or email me at info at drwyattfisher.com. And remember, your marriage is alive. So if you care for it and foster it and nurture it, it will grow. But if you neglect it, it will die. The choice is up to you. Take care.